Welcome to the City Club. My name is Jan Roller, and this year I am Vice President of the Club. We are happy that you're able to join us for this special Tuesday forum before the Thanksgiving holiday. The City Club serves as a place to discuss ideas, problems, and their solutions. These are critical economic times, most say the worst our nation has faced since the Great Depression. And what about Cleveland? The plane dealer on Sunday stated that by m almost every reliable measure, Greater Cleveland's economic decline has worsened. And this is especially true in the city itself, a city bleeding jobs and population with 8,000 empty homes and whose downtown is probably in worse shape than at any point in its 212 year history. Under these circumstances, Cleveland and the region need help and leadership from every player on the economic development front. Today, I'm honored to introduce as our speaker just one such player, Michael Wager, Chairman of the Board of the Cleveland Cuyahoga County Port Authority. The port was created in 1968 to manage our maritime operations. Its powers were greatly expanded in 1987 when, by statute, it was given the authority to issue taxable or tax-exempt revenue bonds for community development initiatives. An example where the Port Authority flexed its muscles for this purpose was in 1993 when it created the Development Finance Group to assist in the financing and construction oversight of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum. Since then, the port has assisted its partners in obtaining $600 million in financing for community projects totaling nearly $1 billion. Michael Wager is a partner in the law firm of Squire, Sanders & Dempsey and has served as counsel and advisor to and director of several private and public companies. In 1994, he earned the designation of dealmaker from the American Lawyer magazine. He has been and still is active in many civic and philanthropic organizations, including the Board of Northeast Ohio Development Fund, LLC, and the advisory board of the National Leadership Council of the Ireland Cancer Center of University Hospitals of Cleveland, to name only two. So now let's hear from Michael Wager on how the Port Authority will help Cleveland and the region regain its competitive edge and reshape the downtown waterfront. Michael? Thank you, Jan, for that introduction and this opportunity to address the City Club. As we all know, this venue and this podium have long been a place for expression of ideas that inform, inspire, challenge, and sometimes provoke the people of the City of Cleveland and beyond. Last week, Sandy Pianalto, President and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, stood here and warned the economy is now in recession. She went on to observe that we are facing the worst financial crisis in decades as credit markets and consumer confidence continue to erode. We do face turbulent times, volatile capital markets, and we do so in a city and a state with limited financial resources and ever-expanding needs. Our state municipal budgets remain, st remain stressed by a shrinking tax base as wages and real estate values diminish. The headline in The Plain Dealer this past Sunday proclaimed the ascendancy of Pittsburgh with Cleveland as its laggard. Also in the Sunday edition of The Plain Dealer was an op-ed column by Thomas Beer, an executive in residence at the Levin College of Urban Affairs at Cleveland State University. Mr. Beer decries the loss of National City Bank, the relocation of Eaton Corporation, and the stalled East Bank Flats project. He goes on to make the case that our city and our region are facing historic trends that threaten the very survival of Cleveland as a city. Are the circumstances really so dire do we face challenges beyond our ability to respond? We ignore facts and trends at our own peril. Our city and our region face issues that have become more acute as earlier attempts to stem population loss and negative self-image have simply failed. 
We were the comeback city for a moment, or were we? Our population loss has been a nearly straight line, 50 year decline. When my father returned from World War II to Cleveland, we were a city of nearly 1 million. Today, we're barely 400,000. Suburban growth does not compensate for this loss. As we lament these circumstances, some consider new remedies and engage in discussions regarding new industry clusters and new capital projects. As we do so, perhaps we overlook our existing assets and how best to redeploy and leverage those assets. We have assets that made Cleveland great and can be part of the city's response to our challenges. Among those assets is the Port of Cleveland. I know all too well there is some confusion as to what port authorities do and what they can do. I am often asked why the port needs to be at the doorstep of downtown with its unsightly operations. Some have suggested the port is a vestige of the old economy and may no longer be necessary. These are valid issues. But let me make a case for the port. Not only our continuing operations, but for an expanded role in remaking the economies of the city of Cleveland, the entire state of Ohio, with green technology and green industry and transforming our center city. The very term Port Authority has multiple meanings and the over 300 Port Authorities in the United States have multiple and diverse missions. For instance, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey manages ports, but it also manages tunnels, bridges, bus terminals, and commuter rail. Port Authority of Houston is part of a 25-mile-long complex of private and public facilities on the Houston Ship Channel, focused primarily on foreign shipment. While the Belmont County Port Authority, based in the small town of St. Clairsville, is one of dozens of port authorities in Ohio, without maritime services and proximity to navigable waterways, they serve modest local economic development functions. The Cleveland Cuyahoga County Port Authority has yet a different mission and a different history. As Jan said, the Port Authority is the creation of an agreement between the city of Cleveland and Cuyahoga County which was entered into in 1968. And the mission of our Port Authority is a reflection of what the city and county leaders envisioned when the Port Authority was first created. An organization to provide management of the city's maritime operations. And for these 40 years, the Port Authority has responded to the needs of its maritime customer base, providing those maritime services. The challenges of today, however, are different from the challenges of the 1960s. The authority has evolved and continues to evolve. Today, the Port Authority is engaged in expanding its service offering to the manufacturing and maritime communities, as well as continuing its development finance activities with bonds for projects as wide ranging as the Cleveland Brown Stadium, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, several Cleveland Clinic structures, Steelyard Commons retail development, and dozens of other public and private projects. Since the early 90s, the Port Authority has offered a spectrum of development finance programs designed to meet the needs of public and private sector borrowers. Our fixed rate financing program is available to smaller enterprises to access, to access debt capital markets at investment grade interest rates often called our bond fund. This program offers financing from one and a half to six million dollars, supporting transactions of up to 20 million dollars with long-term loans of up to 25 years. 